Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at Spring Tool Suite 4. Um, it's been rewritten, it's lighter, it's faster, it's got Spring Boot in mind, and it's still got the nice STS3 features that we learn to love and get used to. So let's get rolling. I've set this all up, this environment for us, in a Docker container. You can easily go get that. You can go get that by using the nice wrapper uh, that I created in my GitHub account here. All you got to do is go get it by git cloning this link over here, right? Once you git clone it, you're going to see that you're going to end up with these uh, shell scripts, which are just going to turn on the execution bit here. You're just going to say schmod, let's say 755 star.sh, whoops, star.sh. And then you're going to actually run this container. Okay. Now the first time you're going to download the Docker image, so it's going to take maybe a couple of minutes to get that from my Docker Hub account. You can see the Docker Hub account here goes and gets this image over here. Once you got everything uh, downloaded, you should see the splash screen show up quite uh, quite soon. Now in my case, I already you know configured the the workstation, so the splash screen doesn't show up, but the splash screen will look exactly you know very similar to to, to this image over here. <clears throat> now, once you got that running, you're gonna want to have you're gonna want to follow this demo over here, so we can cover the great new STS4 features that they introduced that really are gonna change the way you interact, debug, and navigate your Spring Boot applications. They're just absolutely amazing. So just bear with me for a couple of minutes, and I'm gonna show you that. Okay. Now over here. In my GitHub account, this is where the demo uh, application lives. So again, just git clone this and import that into the Eclipse project and you're off to the races, okay? So just to give you a little bit of context here, the STS4 um, executable that you would download that I've already set up in the Docker container, it's an executable that's self-contained, which means that you don't have to download Eclipse and then you know install the STS4 plugins on top of that to be configured and, and used. It's 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 everything is installed and configured in one shot. So that's that's really nice. And that's what I've done in the Docker container for us. So everything starts up and you're ready to run. Okay. Now if we take a look at the project, it's very small. You just got uh, you, you've got a, a, an interface here that we've got implements. So we're gonna have two implementations, and uh, yeah, I have a configuration class that actually uh, here are the two implementations. Once a database implementation, once a file based implementation, and they're actually uh, implementing them uh, using a lambda expression because that interface has the functional uh, interface annotation on it. So we take advantage of lambda expressions. Okay. Now you'll see here that I'm, I'm, I'm building an application class and I'm using that interface as a type. So which one am I actually gonna get at runtime? Usually what we do, right, is we actually have little debug statements or we actually see the behavior of the application and then we know which implementation got injected. But we're gonna see with the STS4 new features that we don't have to do that anymore. We can actually just take a look at our source code and the answer will be overlaid on top of that using these decorators that they've introduced, which is absolutely amazing, okay? So the main class of this application is gonna auto-wire the application class and it's gonna execute the init app. So whether it's gonna be a file based or a database, uh, you know, implementation we're, we're going to see here. Uh, I have as a run configuration, I'm going to be using a profile of dev. Okay, so again, in this Java config class, you know, this is the dev profile. So we should be injecting the file attributes or the file initialization implementation. And we're going to take a look at that. What I was telling you before is that we still get the nice, um, you know, interface to spring.io and what you're going to need if you're actually you know redoing this by hand is you're going to absolutely need the actuator to interact with these new code there creators that i'm going to go over in just a minute okay now i've already done that and if you go to the pom.xml file you'll notice that uh, you know i got the spring boot dev tools and i got the actuator set up for us over here okay now the other thing that's really nice that they kept and you know of course they kept it because we we love it so much is it's 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 you know integrated with the getting started content uh guides so if ever you wanted to go and you know interact or, or just start learning you know you know jpa and stuff like that or mysql or or um, mongodb you have all these guides set up there and that's really no different than the sts3 
that uh, was available before, but they kept it because we're all used to seeing that. Now, let me run this, all right? And you'll notice that I've actually paused the application on purpose, right? You can see here, look at the STS4 live boot hint. That's supposed to say decorators, but I actually said decorators. I'm a bad speller, what are you gonna do? And uh, so we're gonna see here that in our code, everything got overlaid. Right there's there's these there's these there's green annotations that pop up, and you can see here I have a debug statement setting up file attributes, and and or <laughs> I even spelled that wrong, attributes, right? Guys, you can't get everything here. Okay, that's you're gonna have to take the good and the bad. Um, so over here now, if I actually hover over, these are the code hints. You can see I get a little bit of, um, of spring related information. I get the bean ID here. If I hover over here, it actually tells me the active profile is dev. But even without having to hover over it, I can actually see that it's actually the active one because the bean and the profile are highlighted green. Notice that the prod is not highlighted uh, green for the bean. If I hover over it, it still tells me that the active profile is dev. So that's a visual cue, okay? The other one here, this bean, tells you that it's injected into the main class, okay? So you can navigate now to the main class and actually see that the application is being injected here. And it's telling you here with this other code overlay called a code lens, that uh, application class is injecting into the this class, right? If you go to window preferences and you go to uh, look for a server, should be Spring Boot um, language server. This one is is uh, the live boot hint decorators is the one that's enabled by default. That's the annotations that are green. You hover over them and you get that context information. The code lens is what's you know, annot and not annotated, but overlaid here as text, okay? So if I actually turn that off and I say apply, you'll notice that it goes away, right? If I actually click on it and say apply again, you'll notice that it shows up. So a lot of people find the hovering, well, I won't say a lot of people, but some people find the hovering uh, a little bit annoying, gets in the way, so they just um, enable the code lens. I actually love both features, so I actually keep them on, okay? If you go take a look at the application class, you can see that the application class gets injected into main and the Java config class here, the initiator Java config, injects into this one. It injects into this one the file int bean. So you actually know now which implementation of that interface gets injected at runtime without even having to look at debugs or uh, behaviors or anything like that. So this is just, an am these are amazing features that you basically get addicted to very easily uh, once you start using them, okay? The other thing is, is they got a context-related search for Spring. So, for example, if I press the control key and the number six, so command six, you'll see now it's, it's kind of like saying open Java type, but it's very Spring-centric. So if I'm taking a look at, for example, something for auto-wired, you can see here that I have, um, you know, the auto wire annotation obviously that shows up, but I have other context information that shows up in my uh, in my application that is is being auto wired. We have the file int, we have the initial Java config, we have the main class that all actually, you know, are are hitting the search here, auto wired, right? If we say uh, init, you can see all the beans that have to do with init. So file init, you can navigate to it. Notice one thing, I haven't really been going through the package explorer or anything like that or using searches or anything like that. I've been actually using the command six now and, and the highlighting of the um, or, or the overlays as a way to navigate the Spring Boot application, which is really great. So those are great new features that you can now use in developing and navigating and debugging your Spring Boot application. Now I'm just going to come in here and type anything, right? And it's going to stop here, the application. And uh, the overlay should eventually go away. You can see they stopped highlighting there. So there you go, guys. New features in STS4 in a Docker container. Enjoy, have fun, experiment. You have everything available to you from my GitHub account. 
Let me know if there's anything I can improve down in the comment section below. This Docker container is gonna be used in um, other Spring Boot tutorials. So uh, again, if you see any uh, anything, that, any recommendations, uh, let me know so I could add it to the Docker image to make everything easier for us. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching and uh, until next time.